Good afternoon. I'm Pat Coffey. Uh, thanks for having me. I'm going to be presenting today with the International Association of Woodcarvers and uh, Antiquing and Painting. All right, everyone. Just want to welcome you guys to the International Association of Woodcarvers for our meeting on Saturday. Uh, what are we at? Uh, the 28th of uh, January. Man, this month is almost over with. Kind of crazy. Uh, as you can see, uh, Blake is gone with us for one more week. Uh, he'll be back with us next week. He's actually currently flying back from his um, week down in Mexico with uh, Chris Hammock. And so he's going to be here with us this next week. Apologize for the video last week, not getting out until uh, tomorrow or the next day, just because uh, we've had some issues um, with the uh, internet and that kind of stuff down in Mexico and getting things organized out with Blake. But we do want to welcome y'all here today and we're happy you're with us. I'm going to turn things over to Dave, uh, other Dave, in just a second here, and he's going to give us some announcements and going to kind of tell us uh, what's coming up and going on. So, uh, Dave, I'm going to turn this to you, and we will get announcements and stuff going. Thanks, Dave. Everybody, welcome to the Dave and Dave Show. We got uh, coming up next week. We got Richard Holden, and uh, the week after that, Alec Lacasse. Alec is an amazing bark carver among others. And following Alec, we got Betty Falden on the 18th, Dan Gallagher on the 25th, and Jared Wood on the 4th of March. So this year is moving right along. Uh, kudos to the Wood Carving Academy and all they do for uh, supporting this venture that we're on. Um, I have a class beginning a week from today uh, carving a cowboy. If you're interested in that, you can contact me or get some more information from the Wood Carving Academy. Uh, Janet Cordell has a class coming up April and May, carving a cow pony. She calls Old Faithful, and that's uh, that's about all the upcoming information we have for now. So. Back to you, Dave. So as I said, we're going to have uh, Pat Coffey come on here in just a minute. Pat is going to be uh, presenting us today with some painting techniques and some other things he's done. Pat is part of, well, he is Crane Creek Carving. So if you want to look up Crane Creek Carving, uh, Pat Coffey on Instagram, um, you can see him there and see his work that he does. Uh, we're happy to have him with us today. Uh, we're happy Pat can be here and join us and uh, just have a good time. So Pat, with no further ado, just give me a second to throw the spotlight over to you, buddy. Uh, oh, and also, if anybody has any questions of anything, uh, please go ahead and put those in the chat. Dave and I will be watching the chat and we will make sure that um, your question gets asked. It will hopefully be asked in a timely manner. If not, put it back in there again and we'll get back to it. Um, and if all else fails, uh, go ahead and unmute yourself at the right time and just go ahead and ask the question. But anyway, without any further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, switch everything over and get Pat started for us. Hey, good afternoon, guys. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, that's a good thing. <laughs> uh, my name is Pat Coffey. Uh, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, for having me. Uh, definitely a, a humbling experience to be asked by Blake uh, and intimidating, let me tell you. Uh, I feel like I'm at the, uh, the front of the class of the smart kids. Uh, a lot of good carvers out there. Um, so what I'm gonna do to I'll talk about what I, I started in 1989, um, have not been carving that long because uh, I've stopped any number of times in that time frame. It was uh, on again, off again. A lot of times I put it down for a couple of years at a time uh, and then picked it back up again, relearned what I've lost, uh, but took a bunch of courses over the year. Uh, Pete LeClaire a couple of times up in the Northeast. Uh, Dave Stetson was up there. We were chatting earlier about uh, back in 97. I think I had a class with him. Um, and getting back into it again. I've been carving steadily now since 2016. Uh, I retired uh, from a police department up in New York and uh, moved down to North Carolina and been carving ever since. Joined the Davidson County Wood Carvers down here. Great group of uh, gentlemen and ladies. And I'm about uh, an hour north of Charlotte and a half hour south of Winston-Salem. And uh, what I'm gonna do for you today, or demonstrate for today is my painting technique. I do a lot of little stuff just because I am still working. Um, and, and the little stuff just seems to, I can get it done in a timely manner and not lose focus on it. So I just do, um, I guess, ornaments, magnets. Uh, and when I did this mag, I said, oh boy, uh, he'd make a good uh, bottle stopper. And done a few of the bottle stoppers over the year. So I did a bunch of them in preparation. So we'll paint this guy 
And then these guys, we can set aside and we'll get through as many as we can in the hour. Um, I got a couple of different techniques, all of which I use. Uh, and it all depends on the mood I'm in. Oh, let me try this again, different mixture. Uh, he'd look good with, with this shading or not. Um, and most of them come out pretty good. Some are fails. Uh, but I'll start with the painting. Uh, what I do on all of them is once I'm done carving them, I clean them. Um, not too much, but I got the simple green I hit it with sometimes if it's got some of the graphite on it. Uh, let it dry. I have uh, the Minwax 209, and I uh, put a coat of that on, and I let it dry. And I believe this is a uh, Pete LeClaire might have started this one. I'm not sure if he started it, but I saw it from Pete LeClaire. Uh, Mike Pounders did have a, a demo on it, and I also think uh, um, I had a company. Senior moment, but Bart Wilson. Bart Wilson did it also on Facebook. So I don't know which one you want. I'm going to go down here on the palette. And I just put out uh, my flesh color is terry, terracotta, and I have a flesh tone. Um, and I just mix them to taste. I have a jar of water here. and I'll pull out the light and I go really thin and it's all my paints are thin washes. Like you hear a lot of people talk about, they like to see the grain through and, and I agree with that. Um, a lot of my earlier carvings um, were thick. A lot of mistakes like we all make over the years. I was with um, using uh, BLO for a while and had good results with that but and, and a bunch of moves over the years and not storing them correctly. Um, they didn't age well. There was a lot of issues. So, so I've got my name on the back and I usually just come up here and put the, uh, the mixture on and see how it covers. And if I can still see the name through it, I'm pretty good. So we look pretty good there. So I'll try and talk as I go here. If anybody's got some questions, feel free. Otherwise it can be real boring. Am I good on the, uh, the screen guys? Yeah, you're doing well, man. You cried right in the All center. Right. Perfect. And while Pat's uh, doing this, I'll let you guys know, just uh, remind you of a couple people that help support us and sponsor us out. Helvy Knives is a huge sponsor and supporter of what we do. Uh, and also Wood Carving Academy. If um, it wasn't for those guys, uh, we wouldn't be able to do these uh, on Saturdays. So just want to give them a shout out right now. We've got a second or two. Um, if you do have any questions, please put them in the chat and we will ask away and get all those answered for you. Pat, what are you mixing your paint on? What, is it, what are you using for a palette? Uh, it's called palette paper. Uh, and I pick it up Hobby Lobby, Michaels, uh, I don't know, 40, 50 sheets for a couple of bucks. Um, and I can throw it away. So I've got a couple of the plastic pallet sheets, but they don't, they just never seem to work for me. What color are you mixing right or putting on his face right now? It's a mix of uh, terracotta and flesh tone by both by uh, Karam coat, if that's pronounced correctly. And I'll just get an, uh, one covering on for the most part because I'll put a couple extra, a shading of uh, red in the high spots. And I just keep on adding water, getting the mixture. And keep on going around. Now, Pat, you were sharing with uh, Dave and I off screen a little bit ago, uh kind of what your job is now. Uh, you want, want to share that with while you paint? Sure, sure. Um, I've been a helicopter pilot for the last 40 years, I guess. Uh, started in the Marine Corps. I was stationed in California, and that's where I picked up wood carving. A friend of mine introduced us to it, introduced me to it. Um, there was a shop in Garden Grove, California. I think it was Garden Grove that had wood carving in it. Um, I'm not sure if it was a Christmas shop, and had a section of wood carvings. 
or was a wood carving shop in itself. Um, but uh, uh, we got into it. Uh, we were all getting deployed on the boat for six months on a Navy ship and figured we'd need a nice hobby. Uh, we had really good dull knives, hard wood, and uh, really didn't do much carving on the boat. <laughs> so we actually, uh, his wife sent us a, uh, back in the days of video recording, sent us a VHS tape and uh, of a, uh, was it Rick Butts, Rick Boots? And uh, we were all excited. We were gonna watch him carve something. We sat down, put it in the VHS, got about five minutes into it and uh, it switched over to Jeopardy. Uh, the cat walked across the remote when she wasn't looking out of the room because she didn't care. And uh, we gave up at that point. That was probably the last time we tried carving there. But I got out of the Marine Corps, long story, joined the police department up in Long Island, New York, was there for 23 years, uh, one year on the street, the rest of it in the aviation section, retired from there in 2015, 2016, and uh, got a job flying uh, helicopters down here with the uh, local hospital uh, out of Winston-Salem. So uh, it's, a, it's a goofy schedule. I work seven 12 hour shifts, four days and then three nights, and then I have seven days off. So uh, if I can, if they leave me alone, I can get some carbon in while I work. If not, uh, while I'm waiting for the med crew at the hospitals, I can pull up uh, YouTube and watch some videos. Uh, all depends on where I'm into these days. So what, what I'm doing now is, I'm sorry? What color is the red you're using? The red I'm using is tomato red. So I put a little bit too much in, so I drug it off, drug it off to the side here and trying to put some highlights on the high spots of the nose, the cheeks. I'll get around to the ears here. Still off camera, sorry about that. So. Seven days off is great. I get to do some nice carbon at those times once I'm done catching up on the chores. You mentioned the uh, Minwax 209 earlier. Mm -hmm. That's that's when you're using with finishing, correct? Uh, that was my base coat, the Minwax 209. Minwax 2 base coat. Okay. Did you yep. did you uh, thin that out too? Nope. But uh, I uh, some guys will put a uh, an inch or two of the uh, raw sienna oil paints in it and give it a honey color, uh, but I'm lazy. So I just, I started using it straight out of the can and it seems to work for me. So maybe I'll get back to it at one point. Sorry about that. Used to doing this in my lap, obviously. And if you put it on too thick, you can just hit some water and thin it out and spread it out. Had someone ask a question in the chat um, about the boiled linseed oil um, so that they use that. Have you seen, let me get the exact wording back, sorry. Um, what problems have you, have you had with boiled linseed oil? For, first off, I'll put it down to user error. I probably didn't seal it uh, either before or after. Um, it's been a long time since I used it. But what happened was when I opened it up, uh, when we got down here to North Carolina, we had a box of carvings. And they, they, it sort of bubbling, it bubbled up. So, but it was in storage for a year in between all the moves um, from New York to North Carolina. Uh, and it just didn't travel well. Um, I got, I went and raided my mom's house. <laughs> so this is an old wood carving, obviously. Uh, it's aged, which is kind of cool, but the paints have done different things to it. You can see the oils, well, maybe you can't, but the, the oils are starting to pop up in shiny areas. And again, she had moved from Massachusetts. Um, it was in storage for a good bit. Uh, so again, storage was a problem. Um, and like a user error in applying it because uh, a lot of people like it and seem to have good results with it. So I wouldn't uh, just swear it off. Anything I talk about, I would definitely recommend um, 
you know, experiment uh, either with the stuff I'm talking about today, anything you find online. Um, I got a hanger on here. Little chip hanging out there. Got a couple of them actually. But so I don't know if you can, if he's. So I got a light coat on, a little bit of color in the cheeks and the nose. So he looks good on my end. I don't know what it's, how it's coming out up there. It's coming across well, man. All right. So I'll just give one more coat on the lips, bring them out a little bit. All right. That I'll go to next. I've got some navy blue. And I definitely don't need this much, um, but you just sort of plop it on. Uh, these things last forever, at least for me anyway. So definitely on the thin side at the moment, probably too thin. And I'm just gonna put a coat around it. So like I said, uh, this one I've picked up, I've been using for a while. What I'm gonna do is, is paint and then highlight uh, the, the areas that I want shaded with uh, either a, a wrought iron or a uh, burnt umber. And then I'd let it dry and hit it with um, uh, one of the other antiquing it. And since it's already got the shading, I wouldn't do uh, turd polish or uh, the Watco mix I'm going to talk about, but uh, I would hit it with uh, what I started doing recently after watching, I think it was Neil Sutherland. Um, he had this Dora Clear matte varnish and uh, I like how this is coming out. Uh, I let the driving, uh, I paint the carving. Um, I let it dry overnight. And then I just put a coat of that on and let that dry. And it's pretty much done. Um, I am liking the results. So what's been your biggest influence on you and your painting style? Probably, you know, it's just going out there and looking at different stuff. I spend a lot of time. I have a lot of downtime. I have a 12 hour tour. Um, and, uh, yeah, I have Netflix and prime and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I, so you've got all these, uh, great apps to watch and I can't find anything to watch. So I'll put on YouTube and, uh, pick up people, um, uh, who do stuff. Like I said, Mike Pounders has been out there doing stuff. Jared Wood, uh, Roger Stiegel. I'll watch him carve. I'll watch him, uh, paint antique. Uh, Pete LeClaire has pretty much this one out. I think he put it out about 12 years ago, a similar version of this. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll just watch the videos. I'll go up on the, uh, uh, the Wood Carvers Academy, which I'm a member of, um, and, uh, and watch their stuff. Uh, so pro I would say probably the biggest influence is, is, was, at least early on, was Pete LeClaire. You know, I carved with him a couple of times up in the Northeast before I uh, left, um, had all his books before, you know, the internet came along, it was, it was all the books. I got a decent library. Uh, I think at that point, Pete was doing the BLO. Uh, and then he switched over some point and, and I happily followed along. But I just, I watch a lot of videos. Um, I'm starting to take classes. Uh, you know, the pandemic came along and everything went online, uh, especially in the Academy of Woodcarvers came out and they started with the workshops that were three or four weekends. 
two weekends, three weekends, and I work every other weekend. So I'm like, well, shit, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't take this course because uh, I'm going to miss it. So three years into the pandemic, I clue into the fact that they record it and you can watch it after the fact. And uh, uh, it's been great. I took uh, Ryan Olson's class last couple of weeks, learned a lot. It was a great, a lot of fun. Uh, and I didn't carve with them. I just watched. And then a couple hours later, it's downloaded and I start carving. And uh, you can pause, catch up with wherever the instructor is and, and hit play and, and keep on going. And uh, I think it's on for about two weeks after um, the course is over. So I was never accused of being one of the smart kids. And it's continued to be proven uh, I'm slow. So, but that's been great. Uh, I like going up there and watching all that stuff. Uh, Dwayne Gosnell's got some good stuff. Uh, I mean, everybody does. And I'm predominantly, a, uh, I am a caricature carver. Um, I've tried, um, uh, I did a uh, Harold Enloe Indian, cigar store Indian many years ago with the, the big headdress. And after doing that, I decided I was not gonna be a bird carver. Um, I tried some relief carving with my wood carving club and uh, they laughed at me because it was so bad, uh, but it was all good nature. Uh, but you know, you try different things and you eventually find your niche. And I found mine in, uh, in character, just because I like it. I was always drawn to it. Uh, the first thing I saw was Santa's and, uh, I carved a lot of them over the years. Uh, and I just like having fun with the uh, with the carving and not trying to stress it out too much. Uh, I do enjoy the little stuff because I can experiment with um, with faces and expressions. Uh, I can get you to move back towards the middle just a little bit. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, paint I'm using now is wrought iron and I'm just doing the brim real quick. Get you to move a little bit more towards the water area. Yeah. There we go. Sorry, bud. No worries. Keep me honest. <laughs> now, there's another question someone asked, and I'm trying to figure out what they were wanting to watch, but where is where were you going? You were going to the internet, the uh, Wood Carving Academy, correct, to watch all your stuff? I go to the Wood Carvers Academy. Uh, this page has got great stuff on it because uh, I haven't seen everything. Uh, I learned... I mean, you just you just pick up anything, and you know, I go to school every year, factory training, uh, back to uh, the helicopter, and they teach me the same thing every year. It's the same PowerPoint display, but I always learn something different. I always pick up a tidbit uh, that'll help, and it's the same with the wood carver. You know, I might go back and watch that I saw a year or two ago, and I wasn't wasn't ready to hear what it was saying or I wasn't there in my carving level um but uh yeah I'll go back I watched uh I think it was Dave Francis and uh, Snow Cottage Carvings just two while, a little while ago where I started to come up with this idea of of doing the antiquing because I always liked his stuff and uh he uses shoe polish and of course, I couldn't find any of the stuff he used, so uh, I, I bailed on that. But uh, it was, uh, uh, I like it, and I, eventually I'll give that a shot. Uh, so I'm going to do now uh, the visor for his uh, uh, sunglasses here. So I'll do a mix of, uh, I'll just put a little bit of something in with this wrought iron, if I can find what I was thinking of. I'll do a little gray. So this guy, I'll have the Oakleys on him kind of thing. Go ahead and move it up just a little bit more. There you go. And this guy, well, we'll see how he comes out when he's when he's done. He might need a heavy coat of antiquing. 
or repainting anyway. All right. And the last thing I'm going to do for the paint is the hair. And I got a, a, some rich brown. Um, craft paint, acrylic. Anita's all purpose. So, you know, like I said, I just go to Hobby Lobby, uh, Michael's, and if I can find something on sale, great. And if not, I'll, you know, it'll cost me a couple of bucks, but it's, you know, they're not too expensive and they last forever. So like I said, this is pretty much a wash. How many washes do you tend, tend to do? Just the one today. Um, and then I'll get on to, to the antiquing. The, uh, I can hear people snoring already. What type of uh, paintbrushes do you use? Any particular brands or anything? No, no. I usually just buy the pack. Uh, again, if it's on sale, you know, they're not the, they're probably not the cheap, cheap ones, um, but they're not overly expensive either. Uh, and if they come in a pack of three or five, um, I've got the round ones. I've got the, the flat and the curved. So it really doesn't, uh, to me, it's just a matter of what's handy and, what I'm trying to get, you know, got some, uh, some tight spots. I might go for that flat uh, slanted blush brush. All right, the last thing I'll hit, I'll just put a quick, a uh, little bit of silver on his badge. On the job I came from, uh, silver was police officers and, uh, Gold was bosses, sergeants and above. So all my stuff was silver. <laughs> but I was very happy in my uh, flying my helicopters and doing that. So I had a good career there. On the silver, I'm just putting on pretty much right out of the bottle, just out of the cap. Um, and hopefully that'll uh, be distinctive enough uh, when it comes to shading. So I've got a hair dryer real close. I'll hit it for just a couple of seconds. Matt, could you hold that up closer to your camera so that we can get a close up yep. of it? So. I can also bring the camera down if that works. Maybe, I don't know. So, um, so you can see I got a little bit of blush on the highlights. Um, the, the bill and the, uh, the bill is the wrought iron. I don't use straight black. And it was a mix of gray and the wrought iron for the Oakleys. So, and for the shading, what I'll do on this one is I'll hit the, just a, a clear bit of wrought iron and I'll really thin this one out. I should probably go with a thinner brush. Let's see, this one doesn't look too bad. And what I'll do is I'll hit the crevices and anywhere I want some shadow, like you would have in antiquing. So there's pros and cons to everything. Um, this one gives you a lot of control on where you want the shadowing. Um, and uh, 
when you go with the other ones that I'm going to show, you're just, you know, you're kind of at the mercy of the, the medium. You can clean it up, but uh, uh, I've ruined a bunch. I'm sure you have also. So, and what I'm doing is again, just hitting where I want the shadows. And I'm going to outline any changes in color. So around the bill, which is where I've missed all my, uh, a lot of spots in the original paint. So this is covering up some of it. Pat, what color did you say that is you're using? Rhode Iron. Uh, where is it? Folk art, Rhode Iron. Do you ever have, have any issues uh, mixing different paint types? Not just I because I know you. Yeah, I've got all of them here. I think they're all equally represented. Um, and I haven't. I if I've had an issue, it I can't. I can't uh, blame the paint. Um, I'm sure I've had issues with things, uh, but I don't think it was the paint. So like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and put some highlights or the shadowing all the way around where there's a, a break in the carbon. Doing all right on time? Doing well, Pat. You're doing good, bud. All right. Put some up here around uh, his badge. And under the neck a little bit, again, more shot. It's, I guess you're not simulating the antiquing, you're, you're doing it in just a different way. And I'll put some in here for highlights, not all of them, but just accentuate some of the the different bends in the hair. So, so I'd let him dry overnight. And uh, he's rough, obviously, right now during the demo. Um, I'll probably go back and, and touch up the spots I screwed up because I can see him here where I let some of the paint run into one or another. Um, and then I'll probably hit him um either with this uh the matte varnish and if i do the matte varnish it's done uh, he's got a nice uh, uh dull um uh sheen to him uh and it comes out nice i do like it so i'll pull out a couple can we see the hair again doing... please real quick i'm sorry do you mind putting the, letting us see the hair again there with what you're working on real quick sure so and where do you get your bottle stoppers you use or the pieces you use? Um, Amazon. I've gotten uh, a bunch of uh, either corks. Um, I bought these things. Um, I guess they're high end. If I, I guess if I was going to put this in a show, I might put a high end bottle stopper on it. Um, so I got a, a box of these. They weren't too expensive. Um, when I'm doing... Um, Oh, here's one. This is an old one from like 1980s, nah, probably more like late 90s, early 2000s. And this is BLO. Uh, so it's antiqued um, or probably more than I would have liked. Uh, but what I've got is he's on a, a cork and a beer bottle cut down and just stick them up, presents nice. So I like them. Uh, and again, like I said, I, I like doing the faces so I can practice. Um, this one was done this past year. Uh, I had him entered in the, uh, the CCA uh, Carbon in the Rockies. I think I got third place with this guy in the uh, um, bottle stopper category. I don't know if you can see it. I used to do the Death Satin. Um, and at least personally, I have the hair. It's focused on your bottom. 
Okay. There you go. Yep. So he's got a good shine to him, at least from my angle. Uh, I had a hard time not getting too shiny with the deft. So what I've started doing now is, all right, so I've painted um, these guys, the next batch. So they're all painted and I've hit them instead of the deft, I now use, or just a, a matte finish. I found this at uh, Michael's. Uh, everybody recommends the Krylon matte finish 13 something. Uh, and I can never find that. So I just went with the regular old matte finish. Um, this guy's, uh, uh, he's my boss, kind of. He's got gray hair. He's been around a while. Hopefully I didn't give him the gray hair. Uh, and the first antiquing I'll do, I'll do some Watco mix, uh, if I can find it. So I've got uh, Danish oil, dark walnut. And I just put in about an eighth of an inch there. And what I should do is put on some gloves since it is an antiquing solution and my hands will be black by the end of it. Matt, can you speak to that stick that's coming out of his neck? Uh, yeah, that's just a dowel. Um, eighth inch, probably. Uh, so I put a uh, drill bit and go down a little bit into the neck, glue the dowel in, and then uh, I'll go into the cork. Uh, when I'm done, if I, I found that if I paint it with the cork on, I screw up the cork. So uh, I wait till afterwards. Uh, and the other op the other uh, is the uh, natural. So I've got uh, Watco dark walnut, and I'll put it in like a 50-50 mix. And it's just eyeball. And let's see, I've got some, uh, some brushes here from Harbor Freight. I'll mix that up. So it's, there's no paste to it. It's just two different uh, Watco oils. Um, this has been around, I think a lot of guys use this. Dave, if I'm not mistaken, it was in your book a bunch of years ago. Uh, Floyd Radigan, I saw on the uh, wood car or Academy of Woodcarvers, uh, talked about it. And he was using Watco had a satin oil. I don't know if they still make it anymore. Um, so, but I'll just, put this on pat this is an oil we were using a wax oh is that what it was oh all right well, so we'll the, find wax, out. the wax is the dark wax is no longer made okay gotcha so it's good to see how this oil is going to work out Now, you also, when you sprayed that mat on beforehand, you put that all over it, correct? I put that all over, and I put three coats of it on, um, trying to make sure that I got all the spots. Uh, I've done it before where I thought I'd gotten everything, and of course, you don't. And uh, so I've gone three, three coats of the mat finish before I uh, put this on. So, and he's pretty well covered. I got a plethora of paper towels. I'll just let that sit for a second. I meant to get, I forgot, um, Q-tips, uh, just in case I needed to get into the eye section and really clean them out. But uh, we'll see what happens, we'll make do. So what I'm gonna do is just Rub off and hopefully leave this in the crevices. So, and when you start out with no antiquing and you're, it's kind of pasty, at least in my mind, or chalky. And this really takes away that chalkiness. So, so this one, Is pretty good. So I'll just get down in a couple of spots here. 
So even if you're using the antiquing, you're going to go ahead and do the um, darkening, the, I can't remember the color you had, but what you're using around the shadows. No, um, a lot of times I'll just leave that alone. If I shadow it um, and I do a good job on it, unlike what I did on the demonstration, um, I can just hit that with uh, this door clear, matte finish, um, or, uh, or just regular old beeswax and leave that alone. So you're not necessarily doing both and with no, the oil and, and? No, not, not necessarily. Uh, but again, if I don't like how it came out, I can add to it. Uh oh, <laughs> my wife was watching upstairs, heard I needed uh, um, Q-tips and brought them down for me. <laughs> Thank you, Han. Uh, I do have, uh, I sell these things every once in a while on an Etsy account. Uh, and my wife is the, the packing department. So she had uh, minor surgery back in December and was still out there um, packing, uh, hobbling to the table and packing for me. Uh, so at Christmas, she got employee of the year, uh, t-shirt and uh, paraphernalia. So she's, uh, she's real great to me. So, so he's kind of done. So, and like I said, he's just, this is just the Watco Danish oil, uh, light and dark, and you mix it to your taste. Uh, you can go darker uh, and you can go lighter. I think I was probably a 50-50 mix, but he came out pretty good. He's got a little bit of shine to him with the mat and not overly shiny. Uh, let's see. I'll clean my hands before I pick up the next one. Any word on drying time between paint and oil? Um, I usually let them dry overnight. Uh, and paint them, well, I paint them and let them dry overnight. I'll hit them with the uh, three coats of the mat. Uh, and that's about uh, 30 minutes drying time between each. And then uh, that's it. I'll let it dry overnight again, and they're they're good to they're good to touch the oil stuff within 24 hours, easy. So, this next uh, one I'm going to do is uh, I saw Dale. Uh, um, shit. Dale Green. Dale Green, thank you. See, Dale Green uh, demonstrate on the uh, Academy of Wood Carvers. Uh, so what he had done. He used three wax, uh, and I'm not sure if you use golden oak, but that's what I've been using. Um, so I'll take a little bit out of this. Again, this has lasted me a long time. I'll put a little bit down there. And some beeswax, uh, Howard's feeding wax. And again, that's going to be to taste. Um, darker, lighter, it all depends on what you want to put in. So, we got another brush here. And I'll try and get all the chunks and such out, and break them on up. And again, I did ask Dale if he, uh, if he was okay if I could uh, demonstrate this. Uh, and he said, good luck. So it's nice of him to, uh, to do that. Uh, Chris Hammock, I reached out to, and he said the same thing for the next one, which would be his turd polish. So again, this guy um, painted and three coats of uh, matte finish. Uh, I like this guy. Looks like he spent a little bit too much time at the donut shop. Um, since I am a retired cop, I can make fun of him. We don't like outsiders making fun of us. But it's a stereotype for a reason. And the same thing. We're just going to cover this 
all the way through. Now, do you ever wax over um, the antiquing after it's dry? Uh, no, um, I've never, what do you mean by the antique? Like over this, do I put it in acrylic? Uh, from the question, or? I believe from, from what you did last, last uh, procedure you did with the oil, um, uh, then putting the antiquing over that after. No, so because that's quite antique. That, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. Yeah, that one's pretty much ready to go. Um, he's got some nice coloring in there. Um, uh, it's, uh, it's gotten down into the crevices. So I'm pretty happy with him. And that was Brie Wax and the green and white can you used, correct? This one now is uh, Brie Wax, Golden Oak, and um, Howard's Feed and Wax. And it's just mixed to taste. Now, are you, are you spraying the matte finish on before you paint as well, or is that just after? After. The only thing I'm putting on before I paint is the uh, uh, Minwax 209 Natural. And that sort of seals the wood. Uh, for me, it helps with the painting. It's even. Um, if I make a mistake, I can hit it with a knife um, and clean it up without too much uh, hassle. Uh, the, since it does penetrate. So you can take off that top layer and go from there. So again, this one is just wipe it off. Not wipe it off. Again, you want to leave it in the crevices as best you can. Sorry, was out of focus there again. But this gives it again a nice, um, I'll let it dry for a little bit here, probably when the, the uh, presentation is over, go back over and get in the other spots. But I've gotten off the, the highlights, got a nice sheen to it, it'll dry um, and it, it brings out the color. At least I think so. Uh, and it's not as dark as the other two that I'm going to do. Well, the first one I did and this one. So again, you can make it darker by adding more of the Brie Wax. Um, but uh, that's number two. And number three will be uh, Chris Hammock turd polish. See if I can clean up this area a little bit when I'm making too much of a mess. So this guy is again um, base coat of uh, natural 209 Minwax, painted in acrylics, a wash, hit with three coats of uh, the matte uh, sealer, and Chris uses and since he's this was in one of the cca books uh concepts and caricatures i believe so a clean portion and again it's just put a glob in the bottom i have some odorless mineral spirits here I'll put that in and he recommends um, to the consistency of ketchup. At least that's what he said in the book. Um, so I just put it in a bunch in here. We'll mix it up and see what it looks like before I put it on the carving. And again, this goes on pretty good. And this one cleans up since you put the mineral spirits in there. I think all of them probably would clean up with mineral spirits. Uh, but this one, if you don't like what you see, I can hit it. I've got the mineral spirits right here. I can clean it off a little bit with a paper towel. So 
but again, you're gonna put it on and hopefully leave it. Let's see what it looks like in the back here. It's probably a little thin, but I think we can get away with it. Now, what was the color of the gel stain you had? Uh, this was aged oak. You said aged oak, is that correct? Oh, uh, let's see. Yes. Aged oak. Gel stain, Minwax gel stain, aged oak. Thank you. And again, now, do you just, find that pretty standard in your um, Home Depot and places yeah, like that? Uh, the gel stain, uh, I think that's a regular in the uh, in Lowe's and, and Home Depot. Uh, at times, I've had had a hard time finding the uh, the Minwax 209, and that's probably a pandemic issue because um, it's only been the last couple of years. But eventually, it ends up back on the shelf again. So get it all in the cracks and crevices. Again, I'm just gonna pat him and try and get it off the high spots and leave it in the lows. Pat, I'm just curious if you actually tried to polish a turd with that? I have not. I have not. I am. I am just going by what the inventors, uh, the inventors. Uh, I believe it was Chris and uh, Rich Weatherby. Um, they said they came up with this in the book, uh, and I think their quote was, uh, "It you know, it, it does shine up a turd, and it makes all your bad carvings look better." So uh, I'll go with that. I've had good. I've had. I've liked the results of this one. I like the results of all of them. I use all of them. Uh, again, it just depends on what mood I'm in and uh, what I think would look good. Uh, I think the, um, the beeswax and uh, brie wax, that's a nice soft one. And I think that works well for the Santas. Uh, it's not as harsh as the other ones or as dark. Um, so, and if you don't, uh, I got a Q-tip here. So if you, if you think it's too dark in a spot, take a little Minwax or a little uh, mineral oil and just sort of take it out of the eyeballs and some spots that you want. So, but again, it, it brings out the color uh, that you've had there, especially with a wash. You, some of these things go on very light uh, and any antiquing, uh, at least I found, uh, seems to bring it out, the light colors and such. So, so let's see. Would you mind tilting that up the camera with the eyes a little bit, uh, tilting so the hat is back a little bit? Yeah, right like that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. So. So let's see if I got uh, so these are the four we did. I can do that. Um, get these out of the way so I don't make a mess of it and ruin them. So yeah. now is there potential for spontaneous combustion with some of that? Material. Uh, that that is the recommendation. Uh, that uh, safety safety uh, stuff is uh, do not crumple these up, uh, dispose of them properly. I think the recommendation is to lay, lay them flat, uh, let them dry out. Um, I'll put them in a uh, uh, jar of water and let them saturate for a while. Put them in a Ziploc bag and get them out in the trash and gone. Uh, I personally have not had any problems, but I would definitely not go against the uh, recommendations of the manufacturer or anybody else. So, so these are the four that I did. Uh, this was done with the, uh, just the highlights with the dark, uh, dark color. 
So he's dried a little bit, but uh, I'll probably go back over him. I'm not too happy with the way he came out. I rushed him a little bit, obviously. This one was the Watco oil, uh, natural and dark oak. This last one was the, uh, the turd polish. Uh, and that's um, aged oak and mineral spirits. And this one over here is the Brie wax with the uh, Howard's uh, feed and wax. So they're all pretty similar uh, when they're all done. Um, but it's just a matter of, of experimenting. Um, I try to do uh, my experimenting on little guys and then uh, hopefully to move up to the big stuff, uh, bigger. Um, I've got two more here uh, that I'll do later. Uh, since uh, the cop was the same pattern, uh, had to go to the jar head. And then this guy, uh, baseball season's coming up. I am a uh, Met fan. So he's got this little New York Met symbol on there. I believe this guy came from a Mark Akers Civil War uh, pattern that I got on uh, Academy Wood Carvers um, and just modified them a little bit to go from there. Uh, but my recommendation is you just experiment and play um, and have fun with it. Uh, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to ruin a couple of carvings. Uh, we all do. Um, but learn from it. And, and you know, hopefully your, your carvings keep on coming out uh, better. Uh, this time last year, um, I'm a better carver than I was this time last year. Hopefully I'll be a better carver next year than I am now. Uh, it's just a fun hobby. It keeps me out of trouble for the most part. <laughs> So any questions or how are we doing on time? Uh, what is the certificate on the wall? Oh, someone wants to know what your certificate is to have on your wall. Let me put you back on you here real quick. Oh, that's, um, I am a trusty shellback. Uh, if you have not gone over the equator, equator uh, you are a slimy polywog. So I've been over the equator uh, on a Navy ship, uh, went through the ceremony uh, back before there were hazing rules. And uh, so they give you a certificate. So I have a trusty shell back in uh, Neptune's uh, service. <laughs> a lot of old traditions that are fun. Thank you so much, Pat. Uh, that was an awesome demo for us. And uh, I like all the different uh, techniques you got to use and experiment around with. Um, I'm going to actually turn it over to our esteemed co-host, Mr. Dave Stetson, for Dave Stetson's words of wisdom before we uh, let you all go for the day and uh, I remind you of a few things, but right now I'm going to give you some Dave's words of wisdom and then come back for one last little bit. So, Well, I'm glad Blake's on his way back because I'm running out of words of wisdom. But uh, I'm just going to let everybody know that uh, everything we carve doesn't need to be a finished masterpiece. Um, we study and learn from sketches and trials. And the more we fail, the closer we get to where we want to be. If you're not failing, you're probably not growing. That's it. Come on back, Blake. <laughs> yeah, Blake, please come back. The Dave and Dave show has been enough. I'm sure everybody's <laughs> kind of crazy and done with it. Uh, anyway, man, I did get a message from Blake that he was in the air flying and, uh, and looks forward to being back next week. And with that, guys, we want to uh, thank you guys for being here today. Uh, we will have the videos up on YouTube. You can see that at the International Association of Wood Carvers on YouTube. Uh, that will be there uh, hopefully by tomorrow uh, or Monday at the latest. Uh, so we'll do that. But again, thank you guys so much for joining us for the International Association of Wood Carvers. We hope you have a great Saturday.